All right, in this video, I have a comparison between these two shoes. Primarily, I also have the OGs out here as well of the Crocs clogs. And this is the Crocs Echo clog uh, that I recently bought, did a review on. A really pretty cool pair, honestly. One that was kind of a sleeper. I saw the style of the shoe looked pretty cool. And then when I got them in hand and on feet, I was like, okay, they're onto something here. This actually might be a better version of a Crocs clog than this one, which is the uh, kind of more hyped up one. This is a Salehi Bembury collaboration with Crocs known as the Pollux. But this is a fun one. And it's one that sold out like pretty much every single time it's brought to market. The last handful of colorways, including this one, didn't actually sell out very quickly. So I was able to snag a pair of them for retail, which was super rad. So I will have uh, the comparison between all three of these. And then I just wanted to throw this out there. I have a second pair of these that I'm going to be giving away on Whatnot. So if you don't follow me over on Whatnot, uh, I basically am streaming over there just doing a live shows or whatever not streaming I don't even know what to call it but I'm doing a live show over there where I do auctions starting at a dollar for a lot of sneakers in my sneaker collection been purging quite a few so I can clean up my room a bit also if you guys use my link in the description it gives you guys ten dollars free credit when you guys do use whatnot and sign up so uh, go check that out if you guys can and I'll be giving these ones away on Thursday 8 p.m. so excited to do that but anyway this is a fun comparison because honestly they look very very similar the Pollux is retail at $85 and the Echoes retail at $70. And then the regular Crocs clogs are usually around 55 bucks. Sometimes you can get them on sale as low as $28 or so. Uh, but a lot of times they're around that $50 price point for the Crocs clogs. Uh, so which one should you get? Which is the best? Those type of questions. Um, I'm going to hopefully answer that with just some of the, uh, the pros and cons, I guess, of each of the models. Some of the stuff, there's a lot of similarities uh, between all three of them. There's uh, some differences that are impactful and then some of the differences are just kind of cosmetic We're gonna start off first with all of the similarities for the first one is they all have a heel strap that actually moves up and is kind of convertible so if you need to go uh, in the relax mode, wear it up above right here. And then if you need that sport mode, uh, what I call it for my kids, you move that in the back here and then it locks in your ankle. Uh, that's the same thing with the Crocs Pollux. You could see, you can just slide it in here. Then there's actually a little bit more here on the back, but then you do actually ha have the strap that goes down and then uh, runs up at the back of your ankle. And then same with the Echoes as well. So pretty nice, it's like nice and convertible. Uh, and uh, it's it's a really nice option just to have a clog versus something where you can just lock yourself in. It's a small sort of thing that they've added on that makes quite a big impact. I would say for the sizing, they all are kind of similar in that regard where they do fit a little bit big. So I got a nine in all of these. Normally I'm a 9.5 in sneakers, but a size nine works well in all three of these across the board. Um, but I will say that the Pollux's do run a little bit bigger than the rest. So even a nine is actually a little bit big on this one for myself. Okay, if you wear socks and stuff, but just throwing that out there, they do run a bit big. All three models do have a Crocs Lite foam upper. And if you didn't know what Crocs Lite is, it's their proprietary foam, which makes Crocs kind of what they are. That's kind of that lucrative product that Crocs has been selling uh, for so many years now because it's antimicrobial, it's easy to clean, it's soft, it's, it's durable, all those type of things that basically most companies really want to have in their products. Products, Crocs Lite got it right, and that's where uh, they're actually using Crocs Lite in all three of these. Now, getting into some of the differences though, the Echo actually has a drop in Crocs Light Ride uh, midsole in here, which actually makes these extremely soft and good on feet because the Crocs Lite, if you didn't know, is a proprietary foam as well, but it's the, the lighter, softer version uh, that they actually encased inside of this one, which again is just super rad. Because of it being in here, it is softer, like I said, on feet, squishier, but it's also a little bit higher off the ground. So you'll notice that where I put these side by side on feet, uh, I felt higher off on my left foot than on my right foot because uh, of the insole. Another thing about the Echo is you can actually put the gibbets inside of the holes on the shoe, the perforation holes here on the toe box section of the shoe. That is something that a lot of people like. They like the ability to add in their like personalization to the shoes. That's part of the reason why Crocs has such a fun lustrous effect to kids and adults and everybody else. Like look at the monorail guy right here. Like it's just right here on the side. But I mean, it's kind of cool that you can add in your own little personalized charms and stuff to the shoes. And I like that you can add that in to the Echoes. They kind of kept it within the ecosystem with that. Uh, for the Salehi Benbury, uh, versions of the Pollux, they do not have uh, the ability to do that. They didn't create the same symmetry of the holes and everything. It's kind of all over the place. So unfortunately, you can't add your little charms to the Salehis. And speaking of the Salehis, as I mentioned, the sizing is a little bit bigger even on this than the other two. So much, much roomier in the toe box of the shoe. And if you have wider feet, like this is going to be the better option of the three, I think, than the other two. 
because it's super wide in the toe section. Also, another change that they did on this version that they don't have on the other two versions is the strap actually has Velcro on each side and you can actually release uh, the strap and make it kind of sit back a little bit further if you need. Now, I will say that Crocs does have an all-terrain version. I have my Carrot Crocs. They actually have uh, the uh, adjustable straps as well, but this is the one that has the adjustable straps with the nylon back here. However, uh, the Echo does have the strap back here also, but it's not adjustable. For some reason, they decided to sew it in and you cannot move it back, which it does feel a little bit snug and pulled forward, at least for my foot. Um, but if you pull it back and stuff and get it on, it's not like it doesn't fit. It might have been nice to have an extra little bit of give there, but to be 100%, I just wear it up like this anyway, so it doesn't honestly impact me too much. But if somebody does have a wider foot, uh, it might be harder to get your foot into that versus the Crocs Pollux. Another big advantage of the Crocs Pollux is you could see the outsole actually has real traction. There's actually rubberized material in the heel and the forefoot of the shoe right here, all the way through the big toe. Uh, the big thumb as I always call it. But yeah, it's kind of cool. It's kind of discolored right here. It almost reminds me of like the Yeezy 350s, how they have that little extra nub on the back usually where it's discolored comparison to the rest of the midsole. It's because on the Yeezys as well, the rubber is different than the stuff on the sidewalls. And that's similar to this. So this is not Crocs Lite, this is actual rubber. Uh, and that is uh, the rubber on the heel as well. So it makes a cool design, but also it's functional obviously and has a little bit of rubberized material, which means it probably will last a little bit longer. And as you can see, the Echo actually has holes on the bottom uh, where you can see the drop-in midsole in here. The drop-in midsole is glued in, so it's not like you can take it out, but you can actually see it right here through these little holes, which might be kind of a pain in the butt to be 100% honest. The regular Crocs clogs doesn't have that, so it might be better just to have this filled in so you don't see them, but maybe it adds to the more like squish factor being better or something like that with that. Another thing about this Leahy Benberry Crocs Pollux is the upper material. Obviously you can see it's wavy and all sorts of crazy like, it uh, looks like a thumbprint sort of design all over the place. Uh, it's thicker than the rest of the Crocs out here as well. So this is really thick versus the Echo and then the regular Crocs. Uh, so it's the thickest material out here. Also, it does have the highest heel as I already mentioned. Uh, versus the other two has a lower heel. And this might be a good or a bad thing. If you want more of a clog-like feel, it's kind of nice to have the heel kind of non-existent so you can just slide on. This will actually fold down if you don't get it on properly right away. But honestly, it's not difficult to get on or anything. But just throwing that out there, some people might prefer uh, more of a flat heel section because you do have the heel strap that comes down anyway. Other people might like it because it gives you additional lockdown. And then you can wear these forward and still have a good amount of lockdown in the back. The Salehi Benberry Pollux Crocs also weigh the most comparison to the three. And then next in line would actually be these guys right here, the Echoes, and then the regular Crocs are like super, super light, like six ounces or less. Uh, I don't know exact weight, but these things are definitely heavier than uh, the other two out here. But obviously, because it has rubber on the outsole and it's thicker material, like I said, so more material, thicker rubber means heavier material as well. And as I already mentioned, you can't use the gibbets on the Salehi Benberry joints here, but you can on the Echoes. Also, as I already mentioned, the price points, 55, 70, 85. And with that said, what do you guys think is the best bang for your buck? Uh, honestly, Crocs are just like kind of a staple in this day and age, especially COVID times and everything else. And when you have kids, it's like the easiest thing to put on their feet. Probably most of the reason why my kids never wear their sneakers because they could just throw on their Crocs and they could do it themselves and they could feel proud about them. Um, and then when you're old and lazy, you can throw the convertible up like this and just slide on and go like it's it's not bad either. And just a reminder, I'm going to be giving away this pair right here, size 10 of the Crocs Pollux in this colorway on whatnot. The live auction have been super fun for myself to be able to interact with you guys out there. And I appreciate everybody else has been able to actually join those live auctions you guys uh, rock. But hopefully we'll get some more people over there to check it out. And again, use my link in the description. It will get you $10 off your first purchase over on whatnot. Anyway, if you guys want to buy any of these, I'll link them in the description. Uh, I really like the Echoes. Honestly, I like what they have to offer. It's fun to be able to have the variety. Uh, the Slaves obviously have kind of more of a, like the luster and the hype around it. The regular Crocs clogs have a ton of different collaborations that you can get with these that are just nuts. Like I like this one. This one's a Disney map that you could see here, but they do have like, I mean, the Complex Con was crazy. The Murakami one, I wanted those back in the day and I struck out, but there's tons of cool collaborations with Crocs nowadays. Uh, I haven't seen anything with the Echoes since these are so new. Uh, it's just kind of its own thing, but this is a really clean colorway. It's a really comfortable model. And the fact that you have a drop-in insole makes this the most comfortable, in my opinion, out of all three of them. Uh, it would be tough to say which one would you get if you could only choose one. I personally like kind of all of them. So it's like they all serve their different purposes, as I kind of discussed in this video. And hopefully with the information that you have in this video, you can kind of determine which one's best for you. And leave a comment in the comment section, which is the one that you guys like the best out of these three. I would say the Echoes are pretty nice if you want something most comfortable. Widest would go to the Salehis, most versatile. 
uh, colors and everything else, I would say definitely the regular Crocs uh, clogs since you can get them everywhere. But that's kind of the video. Hopefully it was informative to you guys. And if you guys enjoy this type of video, drop a like, let me know. And I appreciate you all for stopping in. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel and you guys enjoy the content. And hopefully we'll see you guys back here for some more videos soon. All right, peace guys.